Hello everyone and welcome to this new Langchain crash course. This is the 2024 version featuring the Langchain expression language and the runnable interface. I guess that is the most requested video I got, so here it is. If you are new to Langchain, you might be wondering why you should use it. Langchain is a powerful framework designed for building applications around large language models, in short LLMs. If you've been keeping up with technological advancement, you're likely familiar with language models. They are the technology driving tools like ChatGPT. Before we start, a little advertisement. I have three large courses on Udemy about Langchain. If you like my style of teaching, want to dive deeper after this course and want to support me and my channel, I would highly recommend them. One starts with the very basics and covers a lot of topics that you learn here in depth. And then I've got two other courses. One is strictly about cloud development on Azure, where you learn how to build and deploy an event-driven LLN application on Microsoft Azure. My third course covers how to build advanced and high-quality applications which use vector stores under the hood, which is the driver of so-called retrieval augmented generation, something you also learn about here. But in this video, we only cover the very basics of that. You still might ask why use Langchain at all? Why not just use the plain OpenAI API, for example? Langchain is particularly useful for several reasons. Modularity. Langchain offers a modular approach to building LLM-based applications, allowing you to easily swap out different components to customize your application to meet your specific needs. The second one, and in my opinion, most important one, is the ease of integration. It provides seamless integration with a variety of data sources, APIs, and other tools, making it easier to create sophisticated and powerful applications. Let's say you want to switch from OpenAI to Mistral, then instead of making yourself familiar with the different API and changing everything in the code, you just have to swap out a single class. That's awesome. The newer Langchain versions also provide enhanced capabilities in comparison to, let's say, Llama Index. With features like the Langchain expression language and the runnable interface, you can write complex workflows and execute them efficiently, leveraging the full power of an LLM. Another often underappreciated part is the community and the support. Langchain is the largest of the frameworks in comparison to Llama Index or Haystack and being part of a rapidly growing community means that you have access to a wealth of resources and tutorials. So now what can you actually learn in this course? I will demonstrate you why Langchain is the best choice for building LLM applications and I will compare it to the vanilla OpenAI API. We will then communicate with an LLM using a special instruction, also known as prompt. You will see how Langchain enhances this process. Then we dive into other key concepts and features. First into memory. You will learn how to use memory in Langchain so an LLM can keep track of what's already been discussed, providing a more coherent and context-aware interaction. We then have a look at retrieval augmented generation. We will explore how RAC allows an LLM to retrieve relevant documents from a vector database and everything that goes into that process. So we learn about embedding models, about chunking documents and making similarity searches with that vector store. That's probably the most complex part of this course, but knowledge in that area is highly sought after. We then gonna explore tool calling. This feature allows modern LLMs to interact with external systems or APIs. We look of how Langchain facilitates these interactions to expand the capabilities of your application. The last part of this course covers agents. We'll introduce agents which are autonomous entities that can perform tasks, make decisions and interact with other systems or users to achieve specific goals. Now we start with the code. You can get the link to the code in the description of this video. By the end of this course, you'll have a solid foundation in Langchain and be well equipped to build your own applications, levering the power of LLMs. Let's get started. You can get the link to the code in the description of this video. Okay, now let's start. As you can see, I use Visual Studio Code and that's the preferred editor I use because it provides out of the box support for Jupyter Notebooks. And after cloning the repository, you should see something like this. So on the left, you can see multiple files. Here are the IPython Notebooks. And we first have to set up a virtual environment. Just open a terminal and run python-m, vnv, and then the name of your virtual environment. I call it .venv and then we can see on Visual Studio Code we noticed a new environment has been created and we want to select that for the workspace folder. Just click OK and wait a few seconds. Now we've got this .venv file and let's just cd into that folder and on Windows we have to cd into scripts and then run activate on Mac, it works a little bit different. So here on the screen, you can see how it works on a Mac. So I see the back and now I can see that I activated my virtual environment. 
So if I run pip list, I can see that only two packages are installed yet. So we have to install some packages with pip install and then we install langchain, langchain minus openai, chromadb as our vector store. And I think that's currently it. We can install the packages also a little bit afterwards. So this may take a few seconds. We can now open the basics iPad notebook. This is the first one we're gonna explore. And we start at the very top. So to make that work, you first have to run a cell. And this will now ask for installing the IPython kernel package. We will also install that. So without that, we cannot run a Jupyter notebook. This may also take a few seconds. Okay, after installing all of the packages, we can now first work with the vanilla OpenAI API. So from OpenAI, we import the OpenAI module and then we create a new OpenAI client. After creating the client, we want to select the correct model. So OpenAI provides multiple models and we have to select the correct one. This can be done by accessing attributes. So by accessing the chat attribute from the client, we can work with a chat model. And inside there, we also have another category called completion. So we want a model that generates responses. And here we've got a create method now. We have to select the correct model. We will use GPT 3.5 Turbo, and then OpenAI expects the messages to be in a special format. So we have to provide a list with dictionaries. And we have two keys in the dictionary, role and content. And the role for us is user. The role for the OpenAI model is assistant. And we have to provide the content we want to send to OpenAI. And in this case, it's just hello. From OpenAI, we will receive a response. So I'm gonna show you that first, how that looks like. It's quite a complex object with far too many information than we normally need. So we've got this chat completion class with an ID, model, the object, service tier, system fingerprint, and a lot of stuff that we are actually not interested in. What, what we are interested in is the following. We want the content and that is the message from the AI. So you can access it like this. So response is an object with a choices attribute that is a list and we access the first element from that list. That is again another object with a message attribute that is another object and now we can access the content attribute of that. So quite complex to just get the text from OpenAI. And now how can we make that dynamic? Let's say we want to provide some kind of prompt for the OpenAI model. So we want to give it a special role or instruct it in some way. So what we want is that the LLM makes a joke about one dynamic topic. And to do that, we created two functions called chat model. This is what we did before, just by hand. And we only want to provide the list of messages here. So that's dynamic. And we access at the add the content of that and just return that content. Then we got the function invoke chain where we pass in a string, which is a topic and we replace the placeholder of that string with the actual value. We now got a string and we pass that string here as content. So at the end, we got a list of messages and we pass that as argument to the call chat model function. So we use that like this, invoke chain, and we want to make a, cho a joke about a parrot. And that's the response from OpenAI. Okay, fine. Now, how can we do that in Langchain? So with Langchain, it's quite simple. We have to use three classes. We have to use the chat model class, which is from Langchain OpenAI, the chat OpenAI class. Then we have to import a template. We've got this in the Langchain core package where we import from the prompts module, the chat prompt template class. And then we've got an output parser. And the output parser is used to extract. So what we did here, that's the job of an output parser. Now we use the chat prompt template class with the from template class method. And this looks pretty much the same like before, but it provides more functionality than a normal F string. Then we create an instance of the output parser and also an instance of chat OpenAI, where we set the model as argument to the constructor. So that's our three parts of our system now. So we've got the model, prompt and the output parser. And now we do the following. We now create our first chain. So we pipe together these three independent components to a single chain. We do that by 
first creating this dictionary with the topic because our prompt template expects this topic to be replaced. And this is a special kind of syntax, which I go into a little bit more detail later. And the key part of Langchain is this operator, the pipe operator. So behind that is a special Dunder method in Python. I also explain that just in a few lines. And what's happening here is that you take that input and you pipe that like in the Linux terminal to the next output. So that's the input. It gets piped to the prompt. The prompt returns a value and that gets passed or piped to the chat model. And the output of the model gets piped to the output parser. And this is how you can create pipes or chains with Langchain. Every chain and every component of Langchain shares the runnable interface and the runnable interface implements a special method called invoke. That's one of many. I will also show you the other methods a little bit later. And we just have to provide the first argument for the chain. So we want the topic for our prompt. So we pass it like this, just a single string. So we want to make a joke about a parrot. So let's execute that. And we can see this looks pretty much the same like with the vanilla OpenAI module. So as you can see, this code is already a little bit shorter. We don't have to know how to access the content of that module. So we don't have to access this choices object with the first element. That's already much easier. But the key part is here that if we want to switch from OpenAI to Mistral, we just have to import another class and then just use a different model. If you would not use Langchain for that, instead of just using a class and providing the API key, we would first have a look at the API and how it works because that's the way you make it with OpenAI, but the Mistral way looks totally different and Langchain abstracts that away from us. And it's very easy to change from one model to the other. You might have stumbled a little bit over this operator. So Python normally does not provide some kind of piping mechanism. So how is this actually achieved? So Python has got a special method called the underscore underscore or method, and that's the bitwise or operator. The pipe operator, which is under the hood, actually this operator is used for performing a bitwise or operation between the binary representations of two integers. You normally don't use that a lot. You normally just use the normal or function, but you can overload this. So you can do the following. You can create a custom class and use this operator and make it return a new instance of that class. So you can, when you make that pipe operation, always return a new instance of that. And that will create another new instance of that. And this will create another new instance. And under the hood, it always creates a new runnable with a specific configuration. So let's do this on our own. We will create a new instance of custom LCL. And here we've got a few functions which actually only make this, for example, uppercase, this adds a quotation mark, and this just reverses the string, of course, not quotation exclamation mark. And now we can do the following. We will first create an instance of custom LCL with the value hello world, and then we pipe that to this function. And this will now call the constructor of that class. And if it's uh, callable, so we create a function, function is a callable, this will create a new instance of custom LCL and call that function and assign a new value for that. So this is what we do under the hood. We provide the string hello world, we pipe that to, to uppercase and this creates a new instance of custom LCL, do that for this too, and then we do the same again. So as you can see, this works and we can just overload this underscore underscore or operator to create this pipe syntax. And this is how Langchain does it under the hood. Of course, a little bit more complex, but that's mainly the way. Okay, after learning about the mechanism of how Langchain expression language works under the hood, we're gonna now have a look at the runnable interface and gonna have a look at other methods. You already saw the invoke method, but there are other methods, for example, a stream method. So if you use stream, then this will make a request to the streaming endpoint of OpenAI, or just use a streaming parameter. And what we're gonna do is that we provide the topic bears now, and we set flush in a print statement to true, otherwise we would not see this streaming. As you can see, that's a little bit short, but I can, you, I guess you can see that this is created now token by token and not just 
here that, that we wait for the response until it finished. Invoke method looks like this. So we get the output all at once. Batch is also nice if you want to make multiple requests at once. So you provide a list of, of topics. In this example, you have got this list of dictionaries. Topic is bears and topic is cats. And this will return a list of strings as output. You also can use this asynchronous. So you can do it like this, async for in chain a stream. So you always set this a in front of the methods to make it async. And this works the same like before. And we can also use a invoke for the asynchronous invoke method and also a batch. I'm just gonna use the full example here. So let's copy that and paste it here. And again, this works the same like before, but that's very useful if you, let's say, use LangChain in combination with Fast API. Okay, that were the very basics. Let's now have a look at the memory IPython notebook. So we first gonna create a little chain. This is what you already learned about. We use a prompt, a model, and an output parser and use chat OpenAI in combination with the model GPT 3.5 Turbo. And we want the same prompt as before, tell me a joke about one specific topic. That works. Let's say we want to invoke it like here in the basics iPad notebook with topic bears and then topic cats. That means that every question is independent, but we could not ask what was the last um, topic you made a joke about. This would not be possible because the LLM would not know that it made a joke about, let's say, a bear before. To make that possible, we need to somehow save the history of the conversation. And this is why we use a, a history class. And we import from Langchain the chat message history class. I'm actually not sure if we have to install. Yeah, we have to install Langchain community first. pip install Langchain community. That was split from Langchain into Langchain community. And now what we're going to do is that we provide this custom get session history function and this stores all of the conversations in just a, a simple dictionary. So that's an in memory solution for saving our conversations. We will also do that with Redis in just a few seconds. And we provide for each ID, which we pass here, a new key in the dictionary and save that um, history with an instance of that chat message history class. And we return from that store the complete history. And now we use that helper function in combination with runnable with message history. There we have to pass the chain and we have to pass this function. We also have to provide this input messages key. And here we can just provide the variable for our prompt, in this case topic, and the history messages key. We just take history as it is. So let's now run this. And now what we have to do is we use the invoke method. And here we pass just the topic in the same dictionary form like before. Topic is bears and this is new. We have to provide this dictionary object a configurable and we have to provide a session ID object. So again, there's a dictionary and the session here, let's say is one, two, three. But that's totally up to us. So you can choose whatever string you want. I just set it to one, two, three. So that's the output here. And now we can ask, make a joke about an animal I just asked about. So now the LLM should know that we just wanted it to make a joke about bears and return a similar joke. So let's invoke that. And we can see why don't bears wear shoes because they prefer barefoot haar. Very good joke. But this only works because we set the same session here. If we make that session to one, two, three, four, then we can see that it just randomly makes a joke about chickens, but not about the bear. Let's set it again, just to prove that it works. And here you can see it's about the bear again. So you have to provide the same session ID and this will now make the LLM remember the history. So under the hood, Langchain saves the messages and provides the full messages to the LLM. Okay, so that was just an in-memory solution. You normally don't want to use an in-memory solution if you want to build a real-world application. And a very good solution to that is using another chat history. For example, Redis chat message history. I created this little Docker Compose YAML file. And if you use that and have Docker installed of your, in your computer, then you can just run Docker Compose up. 
this will download Redis and start an instance of this in-memory database. And now you can use this Redis class and provide it a URL and also a session ID, which we just pass in by this helper method. And again, this looks pretty much the same like before, but this time we use a different system. So not in-memory, but Redis. Ah, of course, we have to install it first. Pip install Redis in this case. And now we should be able to run that. And we can see we get an error because that's not correct. It's topic. Let's do that again and see if it works now. Yes, that works. Let's use the same question like here. Use session ID one to three and see if that works. And again, we can see that the LLM remembers that it just made a joke about bears. Okay, now let's dive into the most complex part of this crash course, RAG, short for Retrieval Augmented Generation. But why do we even need RAG? I will explain it by example. Let's say we want to build a chatbot that allows users to ask questions about our newly opened restaurant, opening hours, food and so on. This knowledge was never trained into the model, let's say OpenAI model, but we somehow have to provide it that the user can get this information. One approach could be that we pass the complete information as we have it to the LLM. Problem is that's expensive and many models have a so-called context window, which is smaller than the document size. Context window means the maximum amount of words or tokens that the LLM can handle. And let's say we have gigabytes of data then we need a different approach. And this is why RAG was introduced. I'm gonna show you that by example from the LangChain documentation. So we've got two steps, the indexing step, where we put data in this vector store, and then we've got a retrieval and generation step. That is when we get data from the vector store and create a response with an LLM. So in the indexing phase, which is the first phase, we first need to load the data. LangChain provides so-called document loaders for that. The second step is to split the documents. This is because of the context window. When we have very large documents, passing everything to the LLM is just too much and the LLM will not get it into its context window or will hallucinate because of too much information. And so we split it into smaller chunks. And then the next step is to embed the chunks. So we use a special embedding model, which creates vectors from text and stores it in the vector store. The embeddings capture the semantic meaning of the text in numbers. And then we store that in combination with the documents in the vector store. So then we are finished with indexing. And the next step is retrieval and generation. So in the retrieval step, we create a question or get it from a user, and then we embed the question. So we embed the question, so we also create a vector from that question, and then we use a similarity metric, most of the time the cosine similarity, to get the most similar vectors. And the most similar vectors have also reference to the documents and we retrieve the documents from this vector store and pass it as variable to a prompt. And then the question and the information from the vector store gets passed to the LLM, which will then create a final answer. That's rag in short. From the theory now into the practice, and we first have to install another package called Langchain Chroma. We've got multiple vector stores and Chroma is one of them. Chroma is a vector store that you can set up locally. You don't have to provide any connection string or set it up in a Docker container. You can just use it here in a Jupyter notebook. So quite easy to use. And so we first create our model or LLM and then we import a text loader. The text loader is responsible for loading the documents from disk or from anywhere else. Then we also import a splitter. We've got multiple splitters in the LangChain package. The most popular and mostly used is the recursive character text splitter. So the next step is to import the Chroma database. So that set up a local vector store. We also have to import an embedding model or the class for an embedding model. We will use the OpenAI embeddings class since we also use OpenAI for the LLM, but you could also use open source embeddings in combination with OpenAI. That's totally up to you. The next step is to 
use a text loader. So in the founder.txt, I created a little uh, yeah, file about a fiction restaurant. And here is the information about the owner and so on and so on. So that's just some dummy information about a fictional restaurant. And we first want to load that information into memory. This is what we achieve here. We just load the information into memory and we've got, if we analyze that, this is a list with just a single item. So I'm going to also show you how that looks like. So this is what we created. This is also a, sh a special class from LangChain, the document class. And the document class contains some metadata and has got this very important attribute page content. You would see that over and over again if you use LangChain a lot. So you can see this is the complete text of our text file. So now we gonna split that single document into multiple documents. To split the documents, we will use the recursive character text splitter and define a chunk size of 200, or I would say, let's make it a little bit smaller because our document is not that long. So this means that the a text splitter will try to split that text along special characters like the new line character, and it tries to keep the maximum amount of characters in that chunk to 100. We can also define a chunk overlap. In our case, it's 30, and chunk overlap means the amount of characters that consecutive chunks overlap. So we've got 30 characters in chunk one and the same 30 characters in chunk two. Chunk overlap can sometimes help with preserving the meaning and the coherence of chunks when processing the text with an LLM. So this can be a quite helpful value, but you don't have to set it. Okay, now we've got our text splitter. And the next step is to use the text splitter and split the document. So we've got the split documents method that takes a single argument and that single argument is a list of these document classes. Currently in that list is only a single element. So this is what we gonna change now by using the text splitter. And at the end, well, let's maybe first analyze how many chunks we will have. So let's then print the chunks. So this is how it looks like. So we've got one document and there we've got the next document. Let's print the length of that chunks so we can see how many documents we created. So we created 50 documents from that chunk. If we change the chunk size, let's say to 250, we can see that we now only got 22 documents. This is how it works. Okay, now we've got our chunks. I would set it, let's say 150. You have to also experiment a little bit with that, of course. And now we're gonna use the from documents class method to create a new instance of the docustore. We have to pass the documents, so we will pass the chunks here. And then we also have to provide the embedding function that the vector store we use to embed and store the embeddings besides the documents. So this is what we have. We have got the documents and the embeddings in the vector store. So let's run that too. This can be deleted now because we don't need it duplicated. And now the indexing step is done. And now we can actually perform the retrieval step. For the retrieval step, we need a special kind of prompt template. So we import the chat prompt template class and we create a special template with two variables. So we've got the initial question from the user and then we've got the context. Context are the documents that you retrieve from the vector store. And you will use that prompt here with the initial question and the documents which should answer that question and send it to the LLM. So we also pass the instruction, answer the question based only on the following context. You are an assistant for question answering tasks. Use the following pieces of retrieved context to answer the question. So if you don't know the answer, say that you don't know. Use three sentences maximum and keep the answer concise. So we've got these instructions that the LLM should use to answer the question. Let's run this. And one alternative is that we use the length chain hub. So we don't have to write these templates on ourselves. So we could also retrieve the prompt like this. This is the exact same prompt like this, but I think showing you this is helpful because you have to understand that we use this context from the vector store and we use the initial question. But let's actually use this and we can see that we have to install a new package again. 
we have to install the Langchain Hub package to make that work. Okay, let's run it again and now it works. Okay, next step is for retrieval to create a special retriever. The retriever is a standardized interface for retrieving documents from the vector store. The vector store is for the indexing process and it has got the method as retriever to actually store this as retriever. And if you perform rack, always use a retriever and not the vector store. Okay, then we've got another helper function and this helper function is called format docs. What it does is that it extracts the page content of documents. So I'm gonna show you that. Here you can see there is a document and here we've got this page content attribute. And this is what we wanna extract with this method because we don't want to send that metadata like source or anything else not related to the question and send that to the LLM. We only want to send the page content to the LLM. And this is why we've got this function. Okay, now we can create our chain. So what do we use here? We use two new classes, runnable parallel and runnable pass through. So we've got this runnable parallel at top and this will create a dictionary from this initial string. And we have to do that because the prompt needs a question and needs a context. So we don't have that in the initial question. This is just a string. So this is why we create this dictionary from that string. So what happens here? We create two keys, context and question. And the value of context is retriever. So as you can see here, you only provide the runnables and this under the hood will call the invoke method of that runnable. The retriever will take that string, embed it and make a similarity search here in the vector store. Retrieve the most similar documents and save that here as context. But we don't want to save a list of document classes. We want to extract the page content. And this is what we do here. We pipe that again. So again, that's the pipe syntax and we use the format docs function here. So we extract the page content of the documents and then we store that as context. So we've got a list of strings which only contain the page content of the documents. Okay, so now we've got our context, but what about the question? We can handle it like this. So we've got the initial question and we want to pass it as it is to the prompt and save it here in this variable or replace that with a question. So how can we do that? We cannot pass just a string here because the length chain expression language needs a runnable. It needs the runnable interface. And if we want the input unchanged, we can use the class runnable pass through. This will take the input as it is and pass it unchanged to the next runnable. So the question keeps the same by using runnable pass through. So we've got the context now and we've got the initial question. We pass that to the prompt and then we fill out the variables and pass the complete prompt to the LLM. The LLM will then return a response and we pass that to an output parser to only get the string from the model. Okay, now we want to ask who is the owner of the restaurant? This is some kind of information OpenAI does of course not know, but if we run it, we can see Chef Amico is the owner of the restaurant. That is here. It is Chef Amico. So that's correct. The LLM took the information from the retriever and created a human-like response with our own custom data. That's what RAG is about. Okay, the last section was probably quite hard. If you didn't get it the first time, try to watch that part again and play around with the code. You then can dive into the next topic, function calling or also called tool calling. Tool calling originates from a similar idea like REC, but works a little bit different. It also is used for working with data not trained into the model, but it's more suited for working with APIs, data that frequently gets updated or is even real time. Okay, so in VS Code, please go from the REC with vector stores and agents to the tool calling notebook. We will come back here in a little bit, but first we're gonna explore what tool calling is and how we can use it. So first we're gonna load our OpenAI API key again, then create our LLM instance. And now we want to know how will the weather be in Munich today? This is a question that was of course not trained into the model, but this kind of information is also not suitable 
for being stored in a vector store because we would have to update it multiple times a day because it's close to being real-time information. We don't care about the weather from yesterday. So how can we do that? We need a third-party API which provides the information about the weather in Munich. If we ask the LLM just a question without a tool, how will the weather be in Munich today? We get the following answer. I'm sorry, I cannot provide real-time information, weather updates. Okay, the model does know that, but we can give it access to a so-called tool to make a request to a weather service. And we can create these tools on our own. We can import a decorator from LangChain, this is in the tools module, and create a custom function with this tool decorator. And then we have to provide the following doc string. So this doc string is for the LLM. The LLM will identify or classify whether it needs this tool with the following description to answer a question or not. And then we also have to provide the arguments that function can take. So we currently have the argument city, which is a string, and we also have to provide that information for the LLM. So that's the information that is used by the LLM. And from our fake API, we will just return sunny and 22 degrees. Then we have to create a list of tools. The LLM takes a list of tools. We have to wrap that single tool in a list. So we have a tool or a list of tools with a single element. Let's create that. And then we have to use the bind tools method. And here we pass in our list of tools. Now we've got an LLM that has access to a tool. If we ask again, how will the weather be in Munich today? Let's have a look at the result. As you can see, the answer is an AI message, but the content is now an empty string. And if we scroll to the very right, we can see that here is an attribute, which is called tool calls. And this tool calls attribute is a list with a dictionary. And here we can see name, args, and also an ID. So these three keys in the dictionary are very important to actually use the tool. The first one is the suggested tool that we should use, and the args are the arguments that we should pass to this function or tool. And the third one is a dedicated ID that the API will use under the hood. So we can also access it like this. Here we can see name, fake weather API, the arguments for the function is city, and the city is Munich. And this tool call ID also has to be used later. So how can we make use of that now? We have to refine a little bit how we create our messages. So currently here we pass a string, but to the invoke method, we can also pass a list of messages. And this is what we're gonna create now. So we create a list and the human message is the message that we ask. So we create an instance of a human message and provide here as first argument that is the content. How will the weather be in Munich today? So we pass that list of messages now to the invoke method and append the output, which is this AI message here, and we append that to the list of messages. So let's inspect that just to show you how that looks like. Here's the human message and here's the AI message. So what do we have to do now? The LLM does not call the tool. And that is often a misconception. We are responsible for calling the tool. The LLM will only make a suggestion for what tool we should use and what the arguments for the tool are. But the LLM does nothing on its own. Really important to understand that. Okay, so we are responsible for making that tool call. To make that work, we create a tool mapping, which is a dictionary. The key is the name of the function and the value is the actual function or tool. So this is our tool mapping and we use the tool mapping to get the correct tool. So what are we doing here now? So we iterate with a for loop over this tool calls attribute. This tool calls attribute is a list of dictionaries. So we iterate over that and for each tool, we extract the name, args and ID and we use it the following way. So we use the tool mapping and try to get the correct key here in our case, this is the fake weather API. So that's provided here in the name. So we access this name key from that dictionary. 
we make the lowercase just to prevent errors. And now we know what tool we have to use. A tool is also runnable, so it has an invoke method. To the invoke method, we pass the arguments. The arguments are stored here with this args key. So we access this and pass that to the tool, which will then provide a tool output. The tool output has to be used and has to be used as content for a special class called tool message. And that tool message also needs an ID. And the ID is a so-called tool call ID, which is the ID of the AI message before. This is how it works. So we iterate over that. And at the end, we first have a look at the tool output. So that's the output from our fake API. We have a look at our messages. And here you can see the AI message, empty content, and the tool message, sunny 22 degrees. And we've got this ID called 6T, D, 8, 1, and so on. And this is the exact same idea as here. These two have to match. Otherwise, the API will not work. OK, now we can pass this list of messages with this tool message again to the API. And this will now create a final response. This time, the LLM provides us the content. The weather in Munich today is sunny with a temperature of 22 degrees. So it used the information from our fake API to create a human-like response. And this is how tool calling works. Langchain also provides predefined tools. For example, we can use the Tabli search results tool and use that as tool for our LLM. So I create an instance of that Tabli search results tool. Then we again create a list of tools, which again is a single tool. And now we also have a look at the name attribute. And you can see this is the name of our tool. We need that for a tool mapping then. Again, we use the bind methods, a bind tools method for our LLM. And now we can use how will the weather be in Munich today. This will now create this function here. And again, we provide this list of messages again. Have a look at the tool calls attribute. Here you can see that now it wants to use the tabular search results JSON tool. And the arguments here is just query. We create the tool mapping, and then we gonna iterate over this tool calls list. There's a little error currently in this implementation when you don't use an agent, which we're gonna use in a little bit. What you have to do is you have to set a new key called type. This is currently not implemented in Langchain, so I had to set it manually to make this work. And this will again create this messages list. So let's have a look at the tool output and you can see we get back this list of URLs with also some content from the API. And now we can use that information to create a final message. So here we can see human message, AI message and tool message. And now we pass that to the LLM and get a final response. I've retrieved information for you. The weather in Munich today is partly cloudy with a high uh, of 22 degrees. Yeah, that's totally right. Currently, when I look outside, it's cloudy. So I get real-time information about the weather provided by an LLM. OK, that was tool calling. Let's now move on to the last section of this course, agents. Agents are entities that use tools autonomously. They are able to reflect their own thoughts and based on the reflection, create a final answer, use another tool, or ask the user a question. They are quite powerful, and Langchain makes it quite easy to create these agents. Let's go back to the rack with vector stores and agents, iPython notebook. We will use an agent because there's actually an agent that I'm gonna show you that uses a vector store under the hood. So this is what I also gonna show you. And first, we again use the Tavily search results tool. So I'm gonna show you that just by example, we're gonna use the invoke method. What's the weather in Munich? So I guess you can already guess the information because I just showed you that. Here we get a lot of information. And then we want to use that information or that tool in combination with an agent. But first, we also want to create another tool, a so-called retrieval tool. And this is for getting information from a vector store. So Langchain provides the create retriever tool function from the retriever module. And we use that to create a retriever tool by providing a retriever, a name, 
and also a description. Again, the description is like for tool calling to inform the LLM when it has to use that retrieval tool. Let's execute that code. Okay, so now we've got two tools, a search tool and a retriever tool. Let's create that list of tools. And now we can go to the LangChain Hub and download a special prompt. That's a prompt which is actually quite complicated and has to be made correct. The agent scratchpad variable is a special variable. It's responsible for data processing for intermediate steps. I told you the agent makes reflections on its own observations. So it gets data from an API and then it thinks whether it can answer the question with that information or not. And if not, it may be using another tool or if it used the available tools already, it may answer, I cannot answer to this question. So this can be quite complex and this is why we use the built-in prompt from the LangChain Hub. Okay, now we use that prompt and use another helper function called create tool calling agent. So we can use that to create an agent that just uses tools. And we have to pass in the LLM, the model, the list of tools and the prompt. So we use that agent with this specific prompt and then we are not done yet. Oh, first we have to load that of course and then create our agent. We are not done yet here. The agent needs a runtime, a so-called executor. The agent executor is what actually calls the agent. It executes the actions or the, the tools, then passes the output back to the agent and repeats. So that's what actually is needed to make that work. Now we can create an instance of that and we use the invoke method of the agent executor. Again, invoke method, it's a runnable. Who is the dad of the Simpsons? And if we use the invoke method here, we can see that it is able to answer the question, but it uses its internal knowledge for that. If we ask who is the owner of the restaurant, then we can see that the answer is the chef, uh, the restaurant's owner is Chef Amico. Works also. And now how is the weather in Munich? I would like to eat outside. So we've got our third tool. And again, this also works. The current weather in Munich is sunny with a temperature of 20.3 degrees. Okay, so we are now at the end of this course. You should have an idea of what LangChain is and what you can do with it. If you found this helpful, please leave me a like. And again, if you want a deep dive into advanced topics and really go deep into LangChain, you can book my Udemy courses for the best price available online. You will find the link to the course in the description. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye bye.